Fellow Guyanese, in further understanding the budget of 2024, it is important for us to understand that planning is not an event. Budgets are not an event. Budgets are just an annual plan, an annual plan of an overarching strategy. That overarching strategy is outlined in a government program for five years. And that strategy for us in the PPP Civic is outlined in our manifesto. What are the programs, the policies that we wanted to achieve in this five-year planning horizon? So budget 2024 is just a component of that holistic plan. For us to understand the full context of budget 2024 and the plan of 2020 to 2025, it is important for us to unravel the period 2015 to 2020. What does this period 2015 to 2020 represent? And what we had to build from? You can either build from a position of strength or from a position of weakness. Now I'm going to be very fair in my analysis because I'm going to also go to examine the period between before 2015 to see from what position the APNU AFC government would have built from. But the period 2015 and 2020 is the period that established what we have built from, from 2020 to today. Now, if we are to look, for example, at the four years between 2015 and 2019, and then use that as the foundation for what we've achieved now, you, you would have seen how things would have dramatically changed from then to now. For a matter of fact, let us look at some of the facts. Output levels for our main traditional sectors were on a free fall between 2015 and 2020 under the APNU AFC government. What do I mean by this? What are the facts? Let us look at the facts. The sectors, when I say we're in a free fall, what do I mean by this? The sugar industry, for example, between this period, fell the aggregate production, contracted by $21 billion. That meant, what that means is that the production level in monetary value contracted by $21 billion. So from where they picked it up, where they picked it up in 2015, to the time they hand it over to us, the sugar sector contracted by $21 billion. It went downwards by $21 billion. Forestry. The forestry sector, when they picked it up in 2014 to when they handed it, up, handed it back to us in 2020, the forestry sector declined by $31 billion. Under the AP and UFC government that are shouting from on top of the mountain now, look at the productive sector. When they took it and when they handed it back, declined by $21 billion. Forestry, when they took it in 2015 and when they handed it back in 2020, declined by $31 billion billion dollars. Bauxite, they claim to love the people in Linden. Bauxite, when they took it in 2015 and when they handed it back in 2020, declined by 19, 9 billion dollars, sorry, declined by 9 billion dollars. This represents between sugar, forestry, and bauxite alone from when they took it to when they hand it back, a decline of $61.5 billion, or 8% of the 2019 GDP. 8% of the GDP declined in these sectors alone. So when they handed back these sectors to us in 2020, sugar, bauxite, and forestry, these three alone, the decline was $61.5 billion in monetary terms. In terms of export, at the aggregate level, the decline of these sectors had a cost. The decline of these sectors cost us in export 
more than 283 million US dollars. Let us move to another indicator. Because I want you to understand the planning matrix, what they inherited, what happened between 2015 and 2020, what we took up. So you can measure periods of planning. You could measure performance. Now, if you look at the reduction of our reserves, because I hear a lot of chattering on reserves, and I want the Parliament to examine these figures. The reserves at the central bank. What we saw in the period 2015 to 2017, gold reserves at the Bank of Guyana fell from 25 billion. From 25 billion, that was what they got, 25 billion. By the time they handed back government in 2020, 2019 figures, the reserve fell to $800 million. Gold reserve was at 25 billion. By the time they handed back government, it went to 800 million dollars. From 25 billion to 800 million. This represents a decline of 97 percent from when they came and when they left in 2019. A decline in gold reserve of 97 percent. Equally worrisome was the fact that the central government overdraft at the Bank of Ghana had increased by more than $114 billion. You know what is overdraft? Overdraft is like a loan facility. The Bank of Ghana overdraft increased by $114 billion or by 540% during this period. So not only did the gold reserve dropped by 97%, but the overdraft increased by 540%. While the deficit by central government, this is a deficit, moved from 9.3 billion when it came in government to $30 billion. If you're running a business, your surplus and your deficit, your profit and your loss, yeah. the deficit moved from 9.3 billion to 30 billion, or the deficit increased by 222%. The deficit increased by 222% when they came and when they left. So gold reserve fell by 97%. The central bank overdraft grew by 540%. And the deficit, the deficit grew by 222%. That is the planning foundation we inherited from them, as against what they inherited. Let's look at other, other issues. What in unraveling, because in doing what we're doing today, we had to unravel all of this that occurred in that five year. They introduced 200 plus taxes, 200 plus new taxes, 200 new tax measures was imposed on private businesses and consumers. What this did was that it led to an increase in tax revenue. But more importantly, it led to the extraction of wealth from the pockets of people. It led to an extraction of wealth from the pockets of people. VAT increased by 43% in extracting wealth. Putting this into perspective, effective tax rate as of 2014 was 15%, while that effective rate moved to 22% under the last government. When you do the analysis, the effective tax rate grew by 7% during the period of the AP and new AFC government. That is what we inherited. That is, the people in 2019 had to pay an average of 22 cents in taxes on every dollar earned. While in 2014, when they came into government, 
the people who are only paying 15 cents, the effective tax rates, would have worked out about 15 cents on every dollar earned when they came into government. When they left government, the people were paying 22 cents on every dollar earned. That is what we inherited. So it's important for our population to understand this. Let's go to the issue of private consumption. Now, in, on, in private consumption, that is the goods and services consumed by the ordinary man and woman, this is an important measurement of distribution of wealth, cost of living, and everything. If you look at page 713 of the 2020 budget estimate, volume 1, appendix G, you will see evident there the level of private consumption in 2019 compared to 2014. And what you will see is that the level of consumption during the five years of the APNU AFC government declined, reduced by $77 billion. In fact, as a share of the GDP, private consumption fell from 82.7% to 53% by the end of 2019. What this means is that our people were spending less, they didn't have the resources to spend, and what it means is that our people's spending rate fell from 20 cents on every dollar earned in that four years. So in every dollar earned, because why? The disposable income was not there. People were losing jobs. The money was not circulating in the economy. That is why private consumption, that is goods and services that ordinary people consume, fell by $77 billion under the APNU AFC government, or from 82.7% to 53%. We have to bring them accountable for this, what they left us, what we inherited when we came into government. Let us look at another indicator. The crowding out of the private sector. According to the World Bank, uh, sorry, According to various Bank of Guyana annual reports, domestic credit to the central government, what this means is that the amount of money that is available for investment increased from $28 billion in 2014 to $140 billion. That is what they inherited. By the end of July 2020, on the other hand, that's when we came into government, what we saw. That domestic credit to the private sector increased from what? $202 billion in 2014 to what? $255 billion in that whole period. But what we saw was that the government was outstripping the private sector for much-needed cash at a ratio of one to seven. One to seven. So, not only were the, was the economy declining, you had less money available, but government was borrowing more than the private sector, competing with the private sector, crowding out investment in the private sector, crowding out uh, uh, resources available to the private sector. And what this led to? This led to a decline in investment. This led to a decline in the expansion of businesses. That led to a decline in jobs. That led to business going into bankruptcy. And that led to a major period in the private sector between 2015 and 2020 where many companies folded up. Let's look at another issue. The decline of domestic credit to the private sector. When you look at the decline of, and this is credit or, uh, to agriculture, manufacturing, construction, when you look at the period 2015 to 2019, credit to each of these sectors fell by, so for example, credit to agriculture fell by one billion. So not only were they starving the farmers and increasing their, their land rental rate, 
but the credit as a result of bad policy, confidence in the agriculture sector was lost. So credit to agriculture fell by $1 billion. Credit to manufacturing and construction fell by $3 billion. That was because there was no construction. People were not building homes. There, were no con there was no confidence in the economy. So credit to construction and, and manufacturing sector fell by $3 billion. And credit to the services sector fell by $3 billion. So in the agriculture, manufacturing, and construction sector, and the services sector, there was tremendous decline. That was what we inherited. They inherited what they inherited and how it declined in that five years. And this is the record of the APNU AFC government that they cannot stand up and defend, that they're running from, that they're hiding from. I want them to debate this record in the parliament, to speak about their record in the parliament. Let us look at another indicator, increase of non-performing loan. In the banking sector, non-performing loan as a rate of the gross loan, so out of all the loans, what took place with non-performing loan? Between 2014 and 2019, non-performing loan moved to 14%. 14%. Non-performing loan increased by $1.9 billion to $10.6 billion. This means that an additional two out of every 10 persons couldn't find the wherewithal to finance their mortgage. An additional two, this is in their five years, out of every 10 persons could not find the resources to service their loan or service their mortgage in the bank. That is the legacy they left. That is the foundation we have to build from. That is the foundation we have to build on. Let's look at another issue. The deficit by central government. The deficits of the central government increased from $9.3 billion in 2015 to $30 billion by the time we came back in government, and increased by 222%. Public enterprises moved from having a surplus when they came into government, public enterprises had a surplus of $8 billion. By the time they left government, public enterprises had a deficit of $9.3 billion. From a surplus, imagine you come in a house and you find $8 billion in your bank account. And after five years of living in the house, you leave a deficit of $9.3 billion. Yo, daka dale out the $8 billion. You hammer it out. And then not only were you satisfied with hammering it out, but you left a deficit for the man who's coming after you of $9.3 billion in the public enterprises. This represents an increase of almost $17 billion. That is what we inherited, my dear Guyanese. That is the planning frame that we inherited. That is what we had to build from. Next Friday, I will take you on the journey of how we took this mess that was handed to us and transform it into what today is leading the prosperity of our country and positioning our country as the fastest growing economy in the world. Thank you, good evening, and remember, we have to stick to the facts. And I challenge them to represent their facts and to represent their legacy in the parliament. God bless all of Guyana. Thank you.